Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. In this video, I will cover at least four issues. One, why did the Russians win in Avdivka and the Ukrainians had to retreat? Secondly, whose fault it is, the guilty parties? Third, uh, what is the Institute for the Study of War, since that's the one who usually reports uh, and gives us assessments from Ukraine. And the fourth one, let's look behind in general connections. Uh, let's start with the last one. We, people who really live lives and don't hide in the basements or sleep all day or watch TV, we know that institutions are ran by humans and the humans uh, have connections with one another. It's always very important to look at the connection between people in charge and not only, even the connection between institutions. For instance, I would like to know a judge, all right, a judge, if there's any connection between the judge and let's say the accused. It's always good to know because if the judge is the father of the accused, obviously the judge will not be impartial, just to give you an exact example. Or if you would have, let's say, the boss of FBI let's say is a Biden and let's say uh, the president is a Biden and Hunter Biden uh, you know, has a little uh, laptop and you have someone else saying, well, FBI should go and investigate uh, Hunter Biden uh, and his uh, laptop. I guarantee you things will not move forward. On the contrary, you could be the one at the receiving end. So when these guys are telling you that no, no, it's just a, no, my friends, that's the way the world works. You know someone, have a connection, you push one another and then you help one another. So let's uh, look at the first article here coming from Ukraine Forum. That's going to be using the Institute for the Study of War. That's going to be the third subject. And I'm going to show you who the Institute of the Study of War is after we read actually how the and why the Russians won in, U in Ukraine's Avdivka. You like how you, I put it? Ukraine, Savdivka. Ukraine form. This is from the 18th of February 2024. Russian forces were able to capture Avdivka due to air superiority. This is Institute for the Study of War. I'm going to read this article in a minute, but let's see. I'm going to show you, actually, how easy it is to see connections in the Institute for the Study of War. What is this think tank? that is the only one I think the Ukrainians are using. This fantastic Washington DC based think tank. They're an institute, they're studying the war. Remember, not that it is a problem, but just to mention it in a passing, the president of the Ukrainian nation is Jewish. The prime minister is Jewish. The chief of staff is Jewish. The defense minister used to be Jewish, Reznikov. Okay, just keep that in mind when I'm starting uh, this little um, dive into the Institute for the Study of War. Here it is, Institute for the Study of War. The Institute for the Study of War is an American nonprofit research group and think tank founded in 2007 by military historian Kimberly Keegan. That's the person. And headquarters in Washington, D.C. Okay, well, let's go back here. We have President Kimberly Keegan. All right, let's see. We're going to go Four, I think, four clicks behind. That's all. One. We have here, right here. We look at early life. No problem. She's just, you know, the daughter of a Jewish accountant. So nothing wrong with that. And we're going to find out that her husband is Frederick Keegan. Next click. Frederick Kligan. Kligan, Kligan. Okay. We go here and nothing uh, special, correct? Nothing very special about Mr. Keegan, uh, uh, except the fact that Mr. Keegan has a brother and his, uh, his brother is, we're going to go down here, Robert, Robert Keegan. All right, let's go and see who's Robert Keegan. So next click, uh, Robert Keegan is right here. We find out that he is from uh, Lithuanian Jewish. That means his brother was Lithuanian Jewish. Nothing wrong with that. Who is he married to? Spouse. Victoria Newland. Who's Victoria Newland? It's okay. 
she's she just Eastern European Jewish, but doesn't really matter. I'm just pointing that this Victoria Newland is related to this being her husband. This guy is the brother of this. And this is the husband of this. And this is in charge of this. So from now on, when you hear Institute for the Study of War, you know more about who's who, what's what. And if that think tank, that research, non-profit research uh, group is objective. All right, move to the article now and find out why the Russians won, they tell us. These guys are used almost always by Ukrainska Pravda, Ukraine Forum, Kiev Independent, uh, New Voice of Ukraine, all these are using this. I wonder why. I mean, I know why. You should know why. Because they are a think tank, research institute. Russian forces, non-profit. Russian forces appear to have temporarily established limited and localized air superiority and were able to provide ground troops with close air support during the final days of their offensive operation to capture Avdivka. So, it is just limited and localized, not everywhere. Superiority, air superiority. The Washington-based Institute for the Study of War said in its latest report, according to Ukraine Forum. All right, we got that. And it says the recent mass use of glide bombs in Avdiivka is the first time the Russian aviation has used these bombs at scale to provide close air support to advancing infantry troops. They don't need to use uh, provide air close air support. You know, this can be launched from far away, right? You can, okay, and can be glided and guided to the location. So anyway, I don't know what the problem is. The air superiority could be established from 50 miles away. I think a glider bomb can uh, be launched and hit the target. Institute for the Study of War notes that a spokesperson for the Ukrainian brigade operating near Avdivka stated on February 17th that the Russian forces launched 60 KAB glide bombs at Ukraine position in Avdivka over the past day and the Ukrainian soldiers operated in the area stated the Russian forces launched up to 500 glide bombs at Avdivka in recent days. So a Kremlin affiliated mild blogger claimed in February 17th that Russian forces launched 250 FAB glide bombs at one specific area in Avdivka alone in the past 48 hours. So they dropped glide bombs. Now, whose fault is it? I mean, the Russians would have done that regardless of, uh, you know, how many Ukrainians have over there, how many shells they got. Because you launch them from far away. The guys are capable of destroying those. I know that the glide bombs are the worst enemy of the Ukrainians. They can't hit them. They're too fast, too heavy, and uh, they can't do shit about it. Too small, actually. So next one. Let's go to the find the guilty. Who's the guilty for this? We got to find the people. Therefore, we can change that and make it better, right? Um, like the right here. Ukraine's Kapravda, Sunday, 18th of February. Biden tells us who that person is. Says Ukrainian troops were forced to withdraw from Avdiivka due to lack of ammunition and Congress inaction. So obviously the Congress in action caused lack of ammunition. Therefore, the Ukrainian troops were forced to withdraw. He thought about that. He just, you know, he made the connections right here. Now, obviously, if the Congress causes Ukraine to lose, that means the United States fights Russia in Ukraine. Because otherwise, if the United States will stop its ammunition supply money, then these guys will lose. Therefore, you are 100% implicated in this one. So this is not just said because, oh, those are the guilty, guilty parties. No, they try to make the uh, issue on the guys who would supposedly not want to vote for the $60 billion package for Ukraine in, for 2024. I think they will vote for it. I am 90 some percent. They will vote for it. The money will go to Ukraine. So now you know why the Russians were capable to win over there is because of their glided bombs, air superiority because of the glided bombs, second, the ammunition, third, the weasels in the Congress who voted 
for uh, peace, not war. Let's put it this way. They will vote for war. I guarantee you that. I mean, I would, be very, I would be very, very surprised if they don't. And if they don't, I guarantee you the Europeans will pick the tab. So it's going to be dropped on those idiots. They've been sanctioning themselves since the beginning of this garbage. So yeah, I think they could be told, we're not going to give them anything. You give them what we started. So, and, and you found out who's the Institute for the Study of War, who is in charge over there, and the connections. And in general, if you live a life, you know that who you know sometimes matter much more than what you know. So over there, the connection between those people, Victoria Newland was very involved in Ukraine. And if you tell me that there's no relationship, no connection between Keegan, her Keegan, whatever her name is, uh, what was uh, right here, Kimberly, between Kimberly Keegan and uh, they don't communicate, they have no agenda. All of these four people that I showed you over here, plus what I told you at the beginning of the video is not, it's just a coincidence. I would like you to show me another coincidence of this kind of another group. Like for instance, Romanians. I dare you. Okay, you don't find Romanians, I want Bangladeshi. I want, I know, Zimbabweans, Chilean, Swedish. I want to see the same connection around this, you know, like uh, Ukraine, United States of America, Europe of the same, you know. And then I would say, well, it's a coincidence. I always say that's a coincidence. Don't connect any dots. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.